Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. That is how it all started for Kathy Rogers at the age of 34. Hi, my name is Matt and on today's Cured by Nature's episode we have another of the cannabis oil success stories. What is Crohn's disease and what is ulcerative colitis? Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory condition of the gastrointestinal tract and may affect any part from the mouth to the anus. Ulcerative colitis is a chronic inflammatory condition limited to the colon, otherwise known as the large intestine. Back to Kathy's story. After doctors couldn't really pinpoint what was wrong with her, she did the research herself and found out she was dealing with what is called a Jacksonian seizure that started because of a leaking clot in her brain. Over time, doctors discovered that the root cause was ulcerative colitis. So from Crohn's to ulcerative colitis, lupus, fibromyalgia, arthritis, asthma, and multiple blood clots. Thanks to cannabis, Kathy Rogers is off 13 medications and in remission from Crohn's. She no longer goes to the bathroom 30 times per day, and she no longer suffers from joint swelling and muscle pain. Today, she offers cannabis consultations and makes her own botanical self called the Ultimate Botanical Balm. Her website is especiallymeforjoints.ca. Now, if this is your first time watching our channel, a word about us. Here at Cured by Nature, we help everyone learn more on how nature can help us become 100% healthy without the use of pharmaceutical drugs. We believe nature has the answer for most of our ailments and we are here to explore that. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share so more people can benefit from this knowledge. Now let's go to the interview. So this is one of those cannabis uh, success stories or cannabis oil success stories. Um, Kathy, so very much nice to have you with us. Um, okay, why don't you just start at the beginning? Like, what was the health issue? What was the health challenge? What were you dealing with? The start was at age 34. I presented with some bleeding rectally. <clears throat> and um, eventually that um, I was home one day and all of a sudden my hand started to tingle and I dropped the phone. So I picked it up and I dropped it again and I picked it up and I dropped it again. And then I realized I couldn't hold it. What I was having was called a Jacksonian seizure, which is a form of stroke. Um, and what that does is it, the tingling marches up your hand and into your arm and all through your chest, and then it kind of stops midway. And then about 10 minutes later, it marches away and you're back to normal again. But during that time when it takes over half your body, uh, you're in stroke mode. So your, um, your speech is impaired uh, and it's, it's exactly like having a stroke. So that's where it all started. I laid in the hospital for a couple of weeks and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Um, I kept having the seizures. Finally, um, they were going to put me in the psych ward because they couldn't figure it out. So they figured it was psychological. So I knew one thing at, I had ultimately, um, had a, a Jack or not a Jacksonian seizure, but I had had a grand mal seizure at home. So I thought I'm going to ask the nurses for their book and I'm going to find out exactly, um, what's going on. So I looked in the neurology book and I found the Jacksonian seizure. And um, I diagnosed myself, actually. <laughs> so when the doctor came in, I said, this is what's wrong with me. And uh, what are you going to do about it? <clears throat> and typically that would be caused um, would be caused from getting off drugs or alcohol quickly if you were addicted. And I didn't drink or do drugs. So the other um, alternative was a brain tumor. So I asked them to check for that. And at that time, my mother had wanted to transfer me to a different hospital in London, Ontario. And I had kind of lost confidence here. So I said, yes, take me to London. So when we got there, um, I could barely walk. And I had complained in Windsor about having pain in my right leg. And the doctor said to me, oh, you've got a Charlie horse, get up and walk. And um, by the time I got to London, I couldn't walk. <clears throat> so I went into the neurologist and he asked what was going on. I told him I was having Jacksonian seizures and he chuckled. 
So he asked me to explain what that was, and I did. <clears throat> so then he agreed with me and started to take me a little more seriously. And then when I couldn't walk, he checked my leg and sent me immediately for an ultrasound, and it was a deep vein thrombosis. So from there, um, they rushed me for an MRI, and they found that I had a leaking clot in my brain. So um, that was the first brush with death. Uh, they didn't expect me to make it through the night. Basically, um, I did find a paragraph once I got out of hospital that says a superior sagittal sinus thrombosis is a leaking clot in the brain and that if given too many thinners, you would hemorrhage and die. And if the clot wasn't busted, you'll die from that. So it was kind of like, sorry for your luck, right? But right. My doctors were fantastic and they pulled me through that night. Um, over time, uh, they started to realize that there was ulcerative colitis, and that seemed to be the cause of everything. So I struggled with that over the years. Um, I tried to go back to work several times. I worked at Costco as a marketing manager, and unfortunately, I just I couldn't do it. The seizures would come back. The medications were making me feel stoned, and I couldn't function on the medications. Prednisone, I was higher than a kite on that. So ultimately, I had to go on long-term disability. And um, eventually there were some bowel issues um, that were pretty bad and I had a bowel perforation. My bowel perforated about four inches. And at that time, um, again, I likely wouldn't have made it through the night, but the bowel uh, folded up and that's what saved me. I was toxic. I remember them saying that I had no white blood cells. And at four o'clock in the morning, they called my doctors. And um, the next morning when he came in, he said, I didn't expect you to make it through the night. So from there, I had to have um, an ileostomy, which is the bag. Uh, that was awful. And I had that for a year. And then they did the reversal surgery. Once I had the reversal surgery, uh, I couldn't keep any food down at all. I was, I think I was in the hospital 10 or 12 times. And finally I said, every time you give me that IV bag, I'm fine. And every time you take it away, I'm not. So they sent me home with IV bags. So it took quite a while for me to um, be able to get off the IV bags. And ultimately I had a clot that stopped the IV from going through. So they had to take it out. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a goner now. And instead of the IV bag, I started on Gatorade because it has pretty much the same content in it. So that kept me hydrated for quite some time. And um, I think about a year later, I was able to wean off the Gatorade. And then I was doing pretty well for a while. Um, I ended up taking in my grandchildren, my four grandkids. So uh, I was well enough to do that. But um, there were some stress issues that happened and that exacerbated the illness. So the Crohn's came back and um, I had a friend here and, and she was taking care of the kids for me because I wasn't well. And I had a, an emergency appointment in London and I, I came down with my suitcase and I said to my friend, I don't think I'm coming home. So um, got to London and God is good because um, I knew something was wrong. And the moment I got to London, I had a pain. And I said to my friend that was with me that I think I need to stop and go to the bathroom. And I had filled the toilet bowl with blood. So I thought, okay, got to get to the hospital. I think I'm hemorrhaging or something. So I got there and uh, I filled five more bowls and finally went to the secretary and said, I need to see the doctor now. And this was his last day before he was retiring. So uh, he did a, a quick sigmoidoscopy and told me that it was like looking up a ketchup bottle. And he said it was almost as if somebody had taken hole punches to my bowel. So um, anyway, he walked me down to emerge and they pulled me through again. So it's been quite a challenge. Through that time, um, I had my joints had gotten so bad from all the prednisone over the years that ruins your joints. Joints had gotten so bad, I went to the bathroom and um, barely could get there. And once I got there, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't get off the toilet because the joints were so bad, I couldn't stand up. So um, I had to crawl back to bed and I thought, this is it. I'm going to end up in a wheelchair. And I've heard of other Crohn's patients ending up in wheelchairs. So um, the next day, uh, I had told my mother what happened and she must have told my sister. And... Five years um, 
it had been five years, I think, but since my sister's friend had stopped to see her. But that day she happened to stop to see her. And when she asked about me, my sister told her what was happening. And she said, I've got this cannabis salve. Take that to her. It'll help. And my sister dropped it off and my friend was here. She was into cannabis. I was not. So I probably wouldn't have done anything. However, my friend insisted and uh, she massaged all of the salve into all of my joints. And when she did, I didn't think anything of it. The next morning, my sister called and said, well, and I said, well, what? And she said, did it work? And I said, did what work? And she said, the salve. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I slept for seven hours last night. I never sleep through the night. I'm always up. I was going to the bathroom 30 times a day at that time. So sleeping through the night didn't ever happen for me. So I realized that. And then I thought, I've been walking around. <laughs> so all of a sudden I thought, oh my gosh, there's something to this. So I started getting on the computer and doing tons of research because I had two days before my rheumatologist appointment. And by the time I got to London, I said, I don't want to go on methotrexate. I want to try cannabis salve. So with that, she agreed. And I started on, on the, um, the cannabis oil as well. And I, and I was, I had the salve. Um, now the gentleman who had given me the salve charged quite a bit. So I thought, well, I can't afford to pay that. So I'll have to learn to make it myself. And one day I happened to go to the phlebotomist to get my blood uh, tested because I'm on blood thinners. And the, I told the girl my story about the salve. And that same week, Jack Kungle went to the same girl for his blood work. And she told him my story because he told her his story, um, how he beat cancer with the, the oil. So um, the next time I went back in, she's like, this guy came in and he told me all about his cancer. And that's two stories in one week. And so she said, you're supposed to call him. So I didn't know who Jack was, but I thought, okay. So I called him. And Jack spent five hours with me. Uh, educating me on everything. I mean, he answered all my questions and continues to answer all of my questions. And he was just a godsend to me. Um, so from there, I joined the two groups, Cannabis Oil Success Stories and the Green Oil Machine Users Group. So um, I just started reading all the posts, all the questions, all the answers, and I just studied my butt off, literally. And um, I learned how to make my own oil. So I do oil infusions, I do oil extractions. And I had told my doctors that if the Remicade failed, because at that point I had achieved rem um, remission with a combination of NTVO and Remicade, which had never been done before. And I told them if that didn't work, that I wanted to try the cannabis oil. Um, I knew I was losing remission. I was having starting to have reactions after the Remicade treatments, and I ended up um, having severe swelling in my feet and a big tennis ball type swelling on my hand. And I was starting to have pain in my hips and joints when um, after the Remicade treatments. So I, I thought I got to get some oil made and be ready just in case. And I did lose remission. So uh, I didn't even call London. I just thought, no, I'm doing it my way now. I'm tired of all of these cancer causing drugs and all of the side effects of dealing with them. Um, the Remicade had given me drug induced lupus. So, uh, and at what, that point I thought they would take me off the Remicade and they decided that the risk of lupus was not as great as the risk of losing remission from Crohn's. So we were going to put up with it all. Anyway, I didn't want to put up with it all, um, so I just started treating myself, and when they called me from London after having had blood work, they said, you've lost remission, and now we're going to go on uh, Humira, and I said, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm doing this my way now, and I'm going to do the cannabis oil, and my nurse uh, just said, Kathy, I hope we never see you again, and we laughed. So from that point on, I think it took two hours for the symptoms to stop, and I have been doing great ever since. I did decide at one point to test it to see if I stopped, would it come back? Um, as I know that happened to Jack and uh, it did. The symptoms came back about three days later. I know that if I want to go on vacation, I can take Nabilone, which is a synthetic THC, but that will only last me two weeks. Um, and then the symptoms will start to return. So it's not a cure, but it will keep you in remission. And I've spoken with other people with Crohn's that are on the oil that have been in remission 11, 12 years. So that was encouraging to me to know that, you know, I can hold remission for a good long time. So I'm much better. I'm off 13 pharmaceutical meds 
and I make salve and help other people. Um, I had a school teacher that had um, restless leg syndrome and I visited him. He was dying. Um, he told me he had about two weeks to live, um, but it, there was nothing the doctors could do for him for the restless legs. So I massaged my salve into his legs. And when he told me he was afraid to sleep because he knew he could die, um, I rubbed it into the soles of his feet because that gives you the sleep. And he had the best rest. And the next day he called me and he said, oh, I feel effing fantastic. And the cool thing was um, his friends were, he, he went out that day with his friends to a movie. He's, he was paraplegic. So they took him in his wheelchair and the following day, he got to have one last ride on his sailboat. Um, and his wife wrote me a beautiful letter. He did die two weeks later. And she wrote me a beautiful thank you um, just for being able to take that pain away from him for that two-week period. So he got to enjoy um, his last bit of time that he had. And since then, um, my stepfather has skin cancer. And I wanted to treat it with my salve and the doctor at the home said, no, we've got to go to the skin doctor and the dermatologist. So I waited and it got progressively worse while he was waiting. And once he saw the, the doctor, um, <clears throat> they basically said they couldn't do anything for him because of the Alzheimer's and because he has diabetes. They said he was at risk of a diabetic coma, so they couldn't put him under in order to cut it out. <clears throat> so they sent him home and they were doing nothing. So at that time, the nursing home doctor uh, had the nurse approach me and give me the go ahead to treat him with my salve. And I made his very strong because we were battling cancer. And within 33 days, the skin cancer completely cleared up. Wow. Yeah. It's just one story after another after another. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. It's, I mean, at that point, when you were explaining that stuff, I just wanted to kind of be myself there and hug you. Oh, thank you. It is, it is amazing. It's given me my life back. It gave my teacher his last two weeks um, pain-free, and he got to do a couple of things that he never thought he would. And for my stepdad, it's given him the relief, and he would not have had any relief. Um, they would have left him like that. Oh, I know, I know. We um, we have that on on our end, stories like that as well. And I'm blown away every time. I mean, like I expect it, you know, to be like that, but I am surprised every time, you know. Like yeah. it's 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 really amazing uh, what this plan does to the human body. It's amazing. It, it is, and it, it's funny because I'm a Christian girl. And, um, you know, some of the, some of the Christian people, um, struggle with all of that. And yet I have a website and right at the top of the website, I have the Ezekiel 47, 12 that says, and the leaves were for healing. And, you know, it was all there. It was in front of us all along, you know, back in the days of the Bible, uh, that's what the plants were for. And, you know, from my understanding years ago, we knew about cannabis and that was shut down by our government. And that's unfortunate. I mean, I lost my sister due to an opioid overdose. And I think, you know, had had they allowed cannabis to be used as a medicine, they, they were aware of it, uh, as opposed to opioids, she would still be here. So I'm a bit of an advocate. Absolutely. We all are. We are all are. Um, and it's, it's a revolution going on. So, you know, let's... Uh... Let's do our part, you know, yeah. let's let's help people understand this, uh, because, yes, some people still struggle with this. Um, there there was just such a good pro anti propaganda done that, you know, people are under the wrong impression. And, you know, you tell somebody something, um, you know, enough times they start believing that. Right. True. You know, it's funny, they, you know, they say that it affects your brain. And I have to agree, it does affect your brain, to the point that I am able to trade stocks again. So it's not affecting your brain in a negative way. It actually has affected my brain in a positive way, that I was able to resume my stock trading course and, and start trading again, and helping others. So um, it's a positive effect that it's had not a negative one. 
Absolutely, yes, and it has, uh, and it has, you know, a ton of positive effects to the whole human body, uh, the brain, the skin, the you know, the, the all the organs, everything. It's amazing, and a lot of times. And tell me if that that's what happened with you. Like you said, you started with the SAV, and then you know you continued with the um, with. Uh, eating the the extract taking it you know sublingually um and then you went off all the medications so h- how long did that take to get you off all of that med- medications well i went cold turkey um with the demerol and the narcotics because i couldn't handle the thc with the narcotics mm-hmm. and initially i gave up the thc and then it occurred to me wait a minute give up the narcotics not the thc So I did that immediately because I couldn't handle the combination. Um, There were some medications that I had to wait to go off just to, um, because they would have affected my INR. Um, So I did have to have um, my doctor help me out with that. And then um, now my gastroenterologist wasn't keen on the whole cannabis idea to begin with. Um, But we had an agreement that um, he could do a colonoscopy after all the drugs were out of my system so that I knew he would be convinced it was the cannabis. And uh, so last the last drug I went off, um, I I was going on vacation, so I had to wait before I messed around with that. But once I got back from vacation in January, uh, I think of 2018, I went off the last drug. And um, I haven't looked back. In April, he did the colonoscopy, and I was fully clear. He had no evidence of Crohn's whatsoever. So he was pretty excited. And the colonoscopy right. report is on my website as well. Cool. Very cool. T- yes. Tell me, um, so you went cold turkey with, um, with a lot of those uh, pharmaceutical meds. Um, tell me. What about the blood thinners you mentioned before? Blood thinners, I have to remain on. That's the only medication that I still take. Right. Have you tried to get off that as well? No, um, I I wouldn't chance that because I have since had um, a stroke in the right cerebellum that I wasn't even aware that I had. Mm -hmm. They discovered that when I I had a bout of vertigo and they found the stroke in the right cerebellum. So... Um, I clearly, I do need to stay on the, the blood thinners. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I'm asking about the details because people really want to know about these things. Uh, you know, anybody that's, uh, on, on blood thinners, um, there's a lot of stories out there and that cannabis helps with that as well, because it does help with, with a whole bunch of things. Uh, so why not with that as well? And I was, I, I wanted to specifically ask about that. It, it may, I think, you know, I, I have to go every so often and usually it's about once a month that I go and every once in a while my INR will go off. So it'll be too thin, it'll be too thick and we'll make all the adjustments. Um, that, that is, uh, for me, it's a risk to, to go off and it's not a risk I want to take. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I love the fact how the actually the, the the modern medicine or the you know the 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 um, I don't know what 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 to call it anymore. I mean, uh, and the alternative medicine kind of works together with in your case. Yes. Uh, so first of all, all the doctors were kind of aboard. You know, when you told them, uh, they were supportive, right? They were supportive in that. Um... We'll put it, well, let's say I I got to see my previous gastroenterologist, even though he had retired, he was working part-time for his daughter's clinic. So I I did have a consultation with him and I do get all my medical records. So I got to read what he wrote. And basically he said, you know, let's let her do this. And when it doesn't work, then she'll be more committed to long-term therapy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So... (laughs) The really cool thing was I got to send him the colonoscopy report and saying, aha, it did work. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a funny story. Yes. So I got a kick out of that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So no worries. No worries. So yeah. Okay. So he was, they they were not, they were not on board uh, like, like that, but uh, they went along, let's say. Yes. They were willing to let me try. Uh, they were supportive, but did they believe in it? No. 
only after. And you oh. know what? Even even after, it's really hard for people to believe. Uh, even after, it's really hard for people to believe when they see yes. that that they 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 think it's an isolated case. They think that it's uh, you know um, that's probably nothing to do with cannabis, and it just happened or whatever, you know. Um, so, but yeah, you know, eventually, uh, people believe, um, you know, real stories. Yes. It's, it's still controversial. Sorry. Um, it's still very controversial. I did, I did speak with my gastroenterologist as to, you know, Hey, you took it on the road and you, you presented my case when you mixed the two biologics, like, why aren't you doing anything now? Uh, because we had joked about him presenting and, um, he, you know, he had said, are you going to come with me? So I was like, yeah. Um, but the, I guess they did have a meeting, um, at the hospital with their group and they decided at this time that they won't be pursuing anything and that they'll leave it up to the cannabis doctors. And the, the frustrating part, I think for a lot of people is even with the cannabis doctors, um, in my experience anyway, is they, they're doling out prescriptions of how many grams you can have per day. And then you have a counselor who really doesn't explain a lot to you. They'll just ask you, what provider do you want and what do you want to order? And most people don't have a clue. So the sad part is, is the education is still not there with our doctors. And, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Recently, uh, I was dealing with a lot of fatigue issues and I went to every doctor. I was in tears at some saying, please help me. Like I'm in full clinical remission. I want to cross the finish line and this is my last battle. Like help me. And even though they did all kinds of blood work, they were not able to help me with the fatigue. Um, and then finally I called Jack and we were talking and I had taken a trip to Florida when my mom was in hospital. So I had to go off my meds and Jack um, brought it to my attention uh, because I thought maybe the meds were making me tired. And he reminded me that, Kathy, you were fine before you went away. And what happened is you went off your meds. And then when you came home, you get kept trying to cut back on your meds because you thought that was the issue. Um, and then um, what happened is I have an incision from 20 years ago when they took my large bowel out. That started to open and um, after 20 years, and it got infected. So he said to me, that tells me there's still sickness in your body. So what you need to do is take three days and really load up on the THC and then back off to your normal dose. And he said, and see if that doesn't work. And he was absolutely right. It did work. So I was to the point where I, I thought I couldn't even function uh, because of the fatigue. And there was sickness, sickness in my body that not one of my specialists were able to identify through blood work or any other means. So um, I'm very lucky to have met him. I'm very lucky that he takes the time to share the knowledge that he has and his experience. And um, because of that, I'm better today. The fatigue is still an issue, but the worst of it is, is gone. And at least now I can function. And I know now that if I'm having a hard time not to back off, but in fact to take more and hit the illness with that medication so that I can start feeling better. It is, it's a journey of learning. It is. And unfortunately, yes, most of the, even the, you know, the, the cannabis doctors, they just lack the knowledge. The, yes. Um, what I'd like to know is, um, what's the ratio? How much THC, CBD, full spectrum? What, what kind of a um, cannabis oil are you taking? Uh, I make my own oil. So with the, um, I order my bud from Aurora at this time. So I have high CBD. Uh, that I take during the daytime because I want to function and I want to trade stocks and drive and all those things. So um, if my math is correct, I'm taking 50 milligrams of CBD in the morning. I also take that at night along with a half a grain of rice sized uh, fully extracted oil um, at bedtime. I have to have the, the very strong THC in order to keep the Crohn's in at bay. Great. Um, Tell me, are there other positive side effects uh, 
from the cannabis oil, uh, you know, beside all of those are the obvious, the ones that, that you actually started this for? Well, I have severe arthritis in all my joints, so I can walk now. I had gotten so bad that I bought a walker and I don't need the walker now. Um, I went to Florida, had a great vacation with my friends and I was able to walk an hour and a half, uh, which really surprised me without a walker. So um, that in itself is the greatest blessing for me, knowing that I'm not gonna end up in a wheelchair. Um, the, the benefits of having a solid sleep you know, I, with going to the bathroom 30 times a day, I was up literally every hour all night. So you're exhausted all the time. Um, now I can sleep through the night. And if I want to rub a little bit of that salve in my feet, I'll, I'll sleep deeper and <laughs> sound. And so you're waking up and you're feeling like you have a little bit of fuel in your, in your energy tank. And, um, you know, I, st I will get tired by, by late afternoon or mid afternoon but at least I have a productive morning. And if I want to go out in the evening, then I know that I need to rest in the afternoon and I can go again at night. Um, but the CBD allows me to um, not be high and to be able to function. And um, at night, the THC is, is what keeps me in remission along with the CBD, the combination of the two, which is important because they work together. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's also, you know, it's not that just the THC or just the CBD. It's usually the combination or so, of some sort. Yes, the whole plan. Absolutely. Um, tell me, besides the cannabis, are, are there other things that, you know, you started doing to get better faster? Well, I'm on the next stage of my journey, which is diet. So, um, you know, Jack, Jack's on me about that. So I built myself a raised garden, a really big raised garden, and I just planted all my, my fruits and vegetables. Um, so my next stage is to learn all the different recipes and just learn a whole new way of cooking so that um, the food becomes part of your medicine too because you're eating healthy. Um, I think a lot of the food items that we eat is the cause of the diseases in the first place. So the diet has to change. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and also the, you know, uh, great thing about you taking the medicine uh, and you being then able to walk is the motion part that the body needs. You know, yeah. the body's created um, to be in constant motion, actually. And the, the, the more it is in motion, the better it functions. Yes. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to getting back to walking. The, the fatigue was my biggest challenge. Um, and I'm trying to build up to be able to get walking every day and just get my body back. Um, you know, because the, the side effect from the prednisone is you put on all kinds of weight. And I've, um, you know, I, I put on a lot of weight with the last stint of prednisone. I was on it for quite some time in very high doses. So that is my next challenge is to get moving and um, get the weight off. And that'll come along, I think, too, with, with the diet change. Um, I'm finding with the higher levels of THC, my appetite has cut where you would think, you know, normally you think THC munchies. Um, but this past few weeks, as I've, I've increased my dose, uh, my appetite has gone down. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, I'm looking forward to getting out walking. I will probably still take a walker just so that I can have a break and a place to sit if I need it. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. It's something that I used to do years ago. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed going walking at five o'clock in the morning when nobody was awake and you have the whole world to yourself. And, you know, I see Jack's videos every morning because he does that. And it's like, oh, I remember that. I want to do that again. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm looking forward to learning all new recipes with all the vegetables that I'm growing. And <laughs> so it'll, it'll be the next step of the journey. Great. Again, a great cannabis oil success story. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing all the details that will bring hope and knowledge to the world. If you have any questions, simply ask in the comments below or send us an email to support at curedbynature.org. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
For more content just like this, subscribe and follow us. Please help us spread this knowledge and share this video. I am Matt. Thanks for watching.